Hello, AP Physics C students. Let's talk about what happens when you have multiple springs in the system. So we'll look at two main ways to combine springs. The first of this is called a parallel connection. This is we have multiple springs attached to the block or whatever the object is. Let's draw a picture. Seen from the side, we have a vertical wall and a horizontal flat surface there. And here's our block of mass M connected to two springs. The springs don't have to have the same spring constant, so I'll call spring 1 a spring constant of K1 and spring 2 a spring constant of K2. And notice I'm trying to draw them a little bit differently. Like The top one here is sort of a heavy duty spring and the bottom one is a lighter weight spring. Let's say they start at their equilibrium position, that'd be x equals 0. I'm going to apply a force and pull the mass out, stretching both springs through a distance x. And because they're both connected here, both these springs have to change length by the same amount. In fact, that's one way to know that we're looking at a parallel combination of springs. No matter, it doesn't have to look exactly like this, but as long as the two or three or whatever springs change by the same length, they're in a parallel combination. So let's do this. Let's apply this force, and we're going to imagine we're keeping the block in equilibrium, net force equals zero, which means if I apply a force to the right of F, that means the total force to the left must also be equal to F. And this is applied by both of those springs. They're both pulling back to the left. And so we can say that my force F is the summation of F1 plus F2. Each of the individual springs, we'll assume is an ideal spring, so it follows Hooke's law. It's, they're known as, what, uh, known as Hookean springs. And so F equals Kx. Now, Technically, is f equals negative kx. Remember, the negative sign is just a directionality sort of thing, saying that if I pull the springs out to the right, they apply spring force back to the left, so that doesn't enter into what's happening here. Think of these as magnitudes. So force 1 in spring 1 is k1x, and force 2 in spring 2 is k2x. They both go out the same distance x, so I can just factor that out. And now we can replace k1 plus k2 by saying that it's a sort of like an effective spring constant. The eq here stands for equivalent. So this is going to be an equivalent spring constant, where keq is just the summation of k1 plus k2. We're going to go ahead and box that in. Notice I added a plus dot dot dot, because while right now there's only two springs in this parallel connection, there could be three or four or five, and then just keep adding those spring constants together. Again, the KEQ stands for equivalent spring constant. So you could think of this as just like the total spring constant from the combination, or another way to think about it is if I have these two springs and it requires a certain force applied to the block to stretch those two springs out at distance x, or I could take these two springs out and replace them with a single spring whose spring constant is the summation of the original two, and it should require the same amount of force to stretch that single spring by the same amount x, so it is an equivalent sort of situation, equivalent spring constant. Now this equation for equivalent spring constant is only valid for the parallel connection. There's another way we can possibly connect springs, and if you have a good memory in physics, you might even be able to predict what that other type is called. I'll wait here a second and see if you remember. And the other type is called series. Did you guess that? Okay, if you didn't, don't worry about it. In class, we'll talk about why you might have already known that it would be a series connection or series combination. And in a series combination, the springs are attached to each other. What does that look like? Something like this. So seen from the side, we have spring one here attached to spring two, and then it's connected to the block. We'll do the same thing. We'll start this at some equilibrium position here, x equals zero. I'm going to apply a force, and each of the springs will stretch. But because they have different spring constants, there's no guarantee they're going to stretch by the same amount. In fact, if the spring constants are different, they definitely will not stretch by the same amount. And this is how we know they're in a series combination. Each one changes length by its own amount, depending on their individual spring constants. And so we can say that the total stretch is just the stretch of spring 1 plus the stretch of spring 2. The total x total is x1 plus x2. Now the force that I apply should then be, of course, counterbalanced by spring 2, which then pulls on spring 1. And by Newton's third law, the force that we're applying is just transmitted on down the line to each of the individual springs. So whatever force this is is opposed by spring 2, and that same force is transmitted to spring 1, and so all the forces are the same. Since all the forces are the same, but the spring constants are different, it is guaranteed that the, spring, uh, that the change in length of each spring will be different as well. 
but we're still going to try to use this idea that f equals kx to get an equation for the spring constant. So we can just take the individual Hooke's law equation, solve them for their individual changes in length. So x1 is f1 over k1, x2 is f2 over k2. And my force is going to be, by Hooke's law, the equivalent spring constant times this total change the length of both the springs combined. And let's just start playing with the algebra here. So I'm going to replace x total with x1 plus x2, as it is over here. And then replace x1 and x2 with these ratios, f1 over k1, f2 over k2. But then remember, all the spring forces are the same. My force and the spring forces are the same, so we can just literally cancel them all out. And then it's just a matter of solving for keq. A couple of different ways we could do this. One way is to divide both sides by keq. And while it doesn't actually solve for keq, we're actually going to stop right there. And if you, again, already know about the different connections here, different, excuse me, different parallels between this and something else in physics, you may have already expected the equation to look maybe a little bit like this. So we'll go ahead and box it in. And once again, I'll write plus dot, 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 in case there's two or three, or three or four or five springs all in series with each other. Just keep going with this way of finding it. Keeping in mind, this is the spring, the way to find the equivalent spring constant, but only in a series sort of combination. It doesn't actually get keq, you'd have to then solve for it, but you've got a button on your calculator that's tailor-made for this sort of problem. It's called your x to the minus 1 button, or your 1 over x button, where you just put the individual spring constants in, hit that 1 over x button, it'll flip it over, put them together, and in the end, just make sure you flip it one more time to find the equivalent spring constant for that series combination.